what's special about this is that with the breathing space meditation guide, you will have the opportunity to continue to work with this guy every day for seven days. So if you wanna go deeper with us in this process, you can begin your journey this week, okay? What that means is from the time we start today, you've got some work that you can do to continue to cut into our reflection for seven days, okay? We have the ability to step through it. We have some a workbook component, if you will. And what we're doing is bringing two important spiritual modalities together. We're bringing together meditation and journaling. So these are the two modalities that we're working with with breathing space. Okay. So one of the one of I think I might have shared it somewhere, but one of my favorite spiritual practices, and maybe one of my secret spiritual practices is journaling. I think that if you ever want to sort out the activity of your own thought world and your own soul, if you ever want to do this, get involved with journaling. This is where you get a chance to monitor and hear what's happening within your own soul and then chart down and measure your own progress. And so I've just become so uh, deeply involved. I've been journaling since I was probably seven years old and I have a collection of journals. And this is now not only um, a book that you and I co-author, uh, Reverend Eric and I co-author, but now you get to be the third co-author in this process because you will get a chance to work with the prompts. Um, so I want to get started, okay? If you can hear me, just raise your hand. Let me see that you're there. You're all here. Okay, wonderful. We're going to begin with week one, day one. Week one, day one. If you have your journals, you can feel free to join us on page 17. And I will, I will read the entry today, and then we will take time to reflect and do our meditation from it today. And it's so appropriately titled, especially because of the co-authors, Rev Kev and I. I mean, Rev Kev, Lord help me. <laughs> Rev, Rev E and I. <laughs> oh. But today's reading is entitled, 3 a.m. friend, 3 a.m. friend. And our declaration, we call it, states, I am blessed by the treasure of my most cherished friendships. I am blessed by the treasure of my most cherished friendships. And why don't we say it together, if you will, right where you are. Come on. I am blessed by the treasure of my most cherished friendships. We have a quote here by Khalil Gibran. He reads, and let there be no purpose in friendship save the deepening of the spirit. Here's the reading. They are your sweet relief, the warm voice of comfort, the strong shoulder to lean on, the lifter of your head, the guilty laughter at things remembered, the wise and trusted voice of correction, the extra set of hands in handling the not so glamorous task in life, the first to arrive and the last to leave on the big day, the name at the top of your emergency call list. They are the keeper of your secrets, the conspirator in your harebrained schemes, the fact checker of your memories, 
the celebrant who makes the loudest splash. They are the exhale amidst the tension and your sigh of relief when you are stranded at midnight on the roadside. Visit often with a bow of gratitude that special place in your heart set aside for your 3 a.m. 3 friend and gift yourself with gladness. Count it a privilege to have found just one in a lifetime. They're more rare than the sighting of a shooting star, a solar eclipse, or any earthly phenomenon. For indeed, they are evidence of a cosmic fact. Just as a single star has its galaxies and the sun has its planets, so too have we been given our friends. Ooh. I hope you like that one. And I, I want to ask you just to take a moment to open your mind and your hearts to the thought of this idea of what a 3 a.m. friend is. Asking yourself first and foremost, as we do with everything, am I a 3 a.m. friend to someone? And and if not, why not? So for me, my short answer for that question is yes, I am. And when I define a 3 a.m. friend, for me, a 3 a.m. friend is uh, being that is being to someone the person who will. Um, answer the phone at 3 a.m. in the morning and respond to it as though it was 12 in the afternoon and get out of your bed for someone um, that you love and go help them if they have four flat tires on the freeway at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I love, I love what this means about what I must have come to learn about a deeper quality. It's called unselfishness. Unselfishness. At the heart of a 3 a.m. friend is this capacity to be unselfish. And in some way, shape, or form, we have all come to be taught how to focus on ourselves. And there's advantages to that. You know, know what I like, know what I want, you know, go for it, go for myself in life. And you should go for yourself. But then as we evolve, then as we mature, then as we develop, then as we unfold, we want to come to the place where the same heart, soul, passion, vigor, effort that I put into the development of my own dreams and my own goals and my own desires and my own ambitions, that I have that and hold that for someone else. Yes? I want to be in someone else's life. Ready? Two things. I want to be in someone else's life with them and for them. With them and for them. You know what I mean by with them? You know, and, and we all know, you, we all have along the way have had a variety of types of friendships, have we not? And and we've learned how to stratify them. Well, this is an associate, you know, this is somebody I can call, you know, um, to complain about things. We're not we're not gonna focus on anything that that may be forwarding or progressing. I can't really count on this person. I, you know, so we start stratifying. This, this is more of an associate, and this is more 
of, of someone that I've just spent, spent the journey with for a long time. You know, we've known each other a long time, but we really don't know each other. I wouldn't tell this person my secret. I don't trust this person, right? And, and, and as, we, as we move along in our journey, at some point, we start to have a, 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 a more refined palette for the quality of companionship that we want in another human being. I want somebody to be there with me. What do I mean by this? With me when I need them. Now, when I say with, I mean first and foremost in the physical body. Okay. You know what I mean when you need somebody to be there with you. I want you to show up. I want you to stand alongside. I want you to be a witness. Anybody like that? Are you that way for your friends? Do you have those in your life who will show up and be there with you? And when they can't be there with you, what do they say? I'm with you in spirit. They create some kind of gesture to let you know that Though I couldn't physically be present, I am all over this thing. I'm all about it. There are times um, when we need someone to show up just at the right moment. Maybe it's that time, you know, when you, when you messed up. Have you ever messed up? And you didn't you didn't want someone to show up who, who was gonna show up with a whole lot of criticism and, and make wrong, but just someone who, who's going to look at you, ready? With the soft eye. Do you know what I mean by look at someone with the soft eye? It is that eye that is non-judgmental. Is that eye that sees beyond your faults? It is that eye that reminds you that you can start over again. It gives you a second chance. It's the eye that knows the truth about you. Have you ever given someone the soft eye? So just raise your hand, let me see. Ever just, you've been that soft eye for somebody. You know they messed up, you know they, but something about you just loves them. I've got one of those friends. I've got a friend like that. He is, he, 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 first of all, we go back to college days and he is a hoot. He has always cracked me up. I can think about him and I am just ready to laugh hysterically because we created so many memories where it was about our laughter and enjoyment and, and, um, having fun, but he's also a bit of a, a scoundrel. He likes to get into uh, these, these uh, crazy scenarios that, um, uh, that just, that are an extension of his, his wild personality, right? And there are times when he needed uh, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, call home, so to speak. So I would get the call and I knew he'd messed up, but I would show up and I received him with the soft eye. I, you know, there's something about that the, his knowing that he was still loved and lovable loved and lovable you're still my guy boy you you're you're a cut up but you're my guy come on let's get, let's get you out of here <laughs> let's get let's go come on and so being a 3m friend is is being with being with whether it's in the challenging times or the points of celebration the high moments that but you find a way to present yourself or or those moments where someone is stranded, they just need your help. And you know, you wanna know the ultimate test? 
in the ultimate test, if you're will, you know, if you're somebody's 3M friend, if they say to you, I'm going to be moving and I need help. <laughs> I need help boxing up this house, loading up this truck, because nobody likes to help anybody move. Tell the truth and stay in church. You know what I'm talking about. Nobody. The moving company doesn't like to help folks move. <laughs> but your 3M friend, when you're a 3M friend, you're top of that list. You're top of that list. So I will be with you. A 3M friend says, I will be with you. Um, and then a 3M friend says, I will be for you. I am for you. I am a cheerleader. I am in your corner. I want to see you succeed. I I, I want the best for you. I want, uh, I want for you what I want for myself. I'm getting some for me. I'm going to get some for you. I'm buying something for me. I'm buying something for you. I, I, I've, I go higher. You go higher. It is a spirit that says I am your champion. I am there to encourage you. Are you that way? for more than yourself. See, we want to get to the place in consciousness where we can, once we establish this for ourselves and know that I am my own best cheerleader. I am my own best personal uh, activist. I am, I, am, I am in my own corner. Once you establish that for yourself, then you got to share that. We share that with someone. And you can share with many people, but it's, 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 it's a part, it's, it's, it's definitely reserved for those three and friends. I'm for you. So when, when your three and friend needs to have a face that's out there in the crowd, that's rooting them on, that's rooting them on, it's your face. Whether they can physically see you or not, it's your face. It, when 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 the, the 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 high accomplishment happens, the first person they want to call is you. Do you know that there are some folks in our lives that when we reach, when we hit certain benchmarks of success, we know that their consciousness is so low that we can't share it with them because they perceive it as being braggadocious. They they perceive it as a a. a thing of competitiveness who knows what i'm talking about raise your hands if you know you know that we, we're talking about uh people who tend to who can't hold you being successful and well and progressing and they being well and successful at the same time those aren't your 3m friends if you if you've miscategorized them just go on ahead and redirect, uh, create a new label for that individual. That's not a 3M friend who can't hold your success and yours at the same time, who can't cheer you on and be there to witness you in your moment of glory, who, won't, who, 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 who is as comfortable being in the grandstand watching and celebrating you as they are backstage. Are you getting me? Sometimes you can't give them the VIP seats, the VIP access, but the, you know, it's, hey, if it's you, hey, hey, go, 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 go. One of my favorite 3M friend stories to share happened in my life between two of my 3M friends on the same day. They both had these amazing accomplishments that happened on the same day. And you know how um, you, when you're a 3M friend, you, you make big mouth promises. All right, man, you know, when, when, you, when you graduate, I'm gonna be there, I'm there. I call them big mouth promises because you don't, you don't act, actually know what circumstances might be at the time that it occurs, but, but there's something in you that, that says, um, Whenever, whatever, you might want to type that in the chat room or somebody, whenever, whatever, that's the, that's kind of the blank check uh, commitment that we have between each other. So whenever, whatever commitment. And on that particular day, 
it turned out that two of my 3M friends had these big, big accomplishments. One was graduating from a very intensive program that I just happened to introduce that individual to. That was taking place in Florida. And then another just happened to be getting ordained um, on the same morning, on the same day. And that happened to be uh, taking place on the, on, in Washington, DC, in Baltimore, I believe it was. And I had, you know, heretofore given this, made my big mouth promise about I'm there and all of that. So I had to put up or shut up. So I, I asked myself the question, how can I have it all? How can I be there for both of them on the same day? One, one event was in the morning, one event was at night. And I wanted to make both. Well, I, I leaned into the question, what would it take? What would it take? And you know, that's a question you want to ask yourself as you're relating to living out this whenever, whatever promise, this be with you and for you attitude, this, this spirit of I'm going to show up and, and, and let you know how much I care. It's something we want to embody. So I, you know, what, what is it going to take? So I figured out how to get a plane ticket because one was at night, one was in the day, and I worked it all out, and I literally flew up. Started out in Baltimore. I think maybe I went the, the night before to Baltimore to be at a ceremony for Reverend Eric Ovid Donaldson on his ordination day. I think the ceremony was about an hour and a half. And I witnessed the pomp and the circumstance and all the wonderful music and festivity. I got a seat right down front so he could see that I was there. Hey, Brother Rev, are you there? You know, I'm cheering him on. Of course, Rev, he has this polydent smile. You know, he's just gleaming and beaming in his white robe that day. And it was a beautiful day. <laughs> it was a beautiful day. And um, then after the service, a wonderful service, they, they lined up all the ordinands. They were all lined up. And, um, and I was to come and greet Rev E and I had a, an envelope with a gift for him. And I went to him and I congratulated him. I slipped him his envelope, gave him a hug, told him I love him and says, gotta go. Pew! And I dashed out of there, hauled it to the air, back to the airport, flying down, you know, trying to get to that plane on time. And let me tell you, I was hustling to get to that, that plane in order to make it to Florida. And made the plane, got off the plane, finding, you know, made it to Florida hauling it, hauling it, hauling it to the next venue in the evening. And of course, the, at that time, this was taxi cab, you know, so taxi, you know, didn't have the direct, so I had to fuss with the taxi driver a little bit. Come on, man, I gotta get there, I gotta get there. Have you ever been in that position? I gotta get there, I, I promise, I gave my word, I'm gonna show up, and you know, and you're hustling. And so finally, we get to the venue and I am sweating. So I run into the hotel restroom, <laughs> try to refresh myself to look poised <laughs> for this graduation event that was taking place at night. It had already begun and I slipped into the back where my other friend was there. And when I tell you I got there minutes before it was her time to be acknowledged. And I looked up and saw that she was kind of, her eyes were kind of down, you know, trodden, like as if to say, you know what? He lied. <laughs> Cause you know how somebody's looking for you. See, when you, when you got a true friend, you're looking for that, that one, that's the one I can look to and count on. And they're, they're, they're my, 
burst of inspiration. You know what I'm talking about. You're that for someone or there's someone in your life that's that for you. And there was that moment where we caught eyes. And I'm like, I'm here, I'm here. You know, I can't say anything. I'm like, I'm here. And you know, when you're for someone, Revy and I do this often, but when you're for someone, you may not be able to vocalize your sentiment. But I want you all to do this with me. Yeah. That's all they need to see. It's that, it's that, that, that I'm in the stands, I'm here. And the graduation went on and they said some beautiful things about my friend. And I got to give her a hug and, and celebrate that moment and spend the rest of the evening with the rest of the graduates there. Now, I have to admit, I, I told stories about the ways that I've shown up as a 3M friend, but I could tell you stories about the ways others have shown up in my life as a 3M friend. You see, Rev, he was there to put the stole on my shoulders when I was ordained. He was literally the person to put the stole on my shoulders when I was ordained. And so I know I have the I have an understanding of the value that it that it brings. Here's here's um, here's a scripture that says, "No greater love than a man would lay down his life for a friend." And and it it, it doesn't necessarily mean sacrifice yourself to death but it means disrupt your plans, lay aside your personal agenda, um, um, create additional space that in, in a spontaneous moment, drop, your, drop what you have arranged and offer your best, the best of your attention, the best of your possession, the best words, the best of yourself, physicality, the best of your intention, that when you are with and for someone, you give that individual the experience of the timeless, the eternal, the, the face of God. Something about you has the capacity to actually stop time. And it's something magical about it. It's something you can't put a real value on. It's something you can't buy and purchase. It's something you can't train someone to be. And what I want to offer, what we're offering with this reading today is the invitation to commit and recommit yourself to being a 3 a.m. friend. That beyond yourself, you go to the place of this unselfishness, this blank check arrangement that you have with at least one other person in this lifetime. And you come to know and treasure what it feels like to both provide this to someone and experience this from someone. For indeed, our greatest gifts as we walk this earth, more precious than diamonds, silver and gold, are the companions that God sends to us to watch over us, to walk alongside us, to be there with and for us, to remind us that lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. 
Dr. Johnny Coleman used to say it this way. Our three M friends are God with skin on the bones. Sometimes we just need God with skin on the bones. Are you that for someone? So in this process, in this practice with our breathing space journey, what we will do to go into our meditation, we then turn to the next page after we've had our reading, go to page 18 or the next page and there's a reflection question. And, and today's reflection question will be the trigger that takes us into the period of meditation. But in your own private time, it will be the question prompt that you use the first of seven question prompts that you use to walk you through and to process deeply this reading. And so here is today's question prompt as we prepare ourselves for a time of meditation. It says, how often are you filled with gratitude for your 3M friends? And what expressions of appreciation have you shown them lately? How often are you filled with gratitude for your 3 a.m. friends? And what expressions of appreciation have you shown them lately? So let's take a moment to create the breathing space. I'm gonna get a sip of my tea. And if you would, place yourself in a receptive position. Mm. Place your feet flat on the floor if you can, or if you are in a space where you could sit in the lotus, go ahead and Sit in your lotus position, your spine upright and relaxed, your palms upwards, open and receptive. Become present to your breath. And now let's take a moment to create the breathing space, bringing the breath up from the earth, all up and above at the crown, down into and out of the chest cavity. Let's try it again, your breathing space. Inhale, through the nose hold, out through the mouth, let the shoulders melt down, feel yourself, the weight of the body pressing on the chair beneath you, drawing up from the earth again, over the crown and hold, out through the mouth with a sigh. One more time, take the breath, repossess the breath from all the ways that it may be occupied now, repossess it, bring it back into the self, do it on your own now. And let it go. And now, enter into that secret place of the Most High. Right there, see, sense, and feel. See, sense, and feel yourself standing on the stage of your imagination.
And now on that stage, witness yourself just backstage, you're backstage. It's a big day. It's your big day. And there's something big and grand and important that you are there to do. And from the back stage area, you hear the crowd infilling this grand edifice where you will do the big, the important, the significant moment and experience of your life. You're all dressed up. You're all prepared. But you're a little, you're a bit nervous. You feel a little vulnerable in this moment. And nothing will quite resolve the calm, quite resolve the anxiety than to see the eyes of your beloved there in the crowd of the masses rooting you on, cheering you on, saying that I am here, I got your back. You got this. I'm so proud of you. I knew you could do it. Go ahead, go ahead, go do your thing. See, sense, and feel now. <sighs> Yourself taking on a greater sense of calm, a greater sense of peace, just with the inner knowing that your beloved, your 3 a.m. friend is coming to see you. Take a moment now to witness and experience yourself looking into their faces and with your heart of gratitude even before you go forth to do what is yours to do. You don't know where they're sitting, but you can, you can imagine them. Within your heart, see yourself standing face to face with your beloved. And see them place their hands on your shoulders and Feel that warmth, that encouragement. Feel their hand at the tip of your chin as they slightly lift your head up. Feel their embrace upon you, drawing you to their hearts. and giving you the physical reassurance that you are not alone. And now draw in with a deep breath, confidence. <sighs> draw in the strength. Draw in the, the gratitude. Draw in the power that you just received from your beloved.
And now for them. Give them the soft eye. And a whisper of thanks. Whoever they are, wherever they are, give thanks. If you can think of their names right now, with a whisper, just finish the sentence, thank you, and then add the name. Thank you, Rev. Eric. Now take a deep breath. <sighs> Filled with poise. Step out onto that stage. Do your thing. And amidst the masses that are there, congratulating and cheering you on this Everest moment in your life, Hurry now to find your beloved. Locate the face once again. And in your own way in this moment, now thank God for showing up in the personage of your 3 a.m. friend. Take a moment. Take a moment. Remember to breathe. And now, as you prepare to depart, once again, see yourself. standing across from your beloved, your 3 a.m. friend. Filled with gratitude and appreciation, whether that individual is here in the physical dimension or they've moved on beyond our physical sites, there is an eternal bond that is there that we want to acknowledge. We bring our hands together in the sacred pranam. We offer them the soft eye, <sighs> capturing their eyes. We acknowledge their inner divinity and bow to them with the namaste. Namaste. Oh, sacred one. Namaste, O oh sacred one. Mm. And from this high altar of appreciation, 
hold them in their, your hearts. And just remember this word, these words as you carry them throughout the day and through the rest of your life. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. Take a breath at that inner knowing. Come back to this time, this place, this physical space where you are. As we end this part of our practice, gently open your eyes. And again, namaste. Namaste. I behold the divinity, the light, the sacred in you. May we all become 3 a.m. friends. Mm. This week, continue your journey on your own, drill down deeper into this practice, creating your own breathing space. In this book, we provide some instruction for how you can create a sacred space to do the practice, okay? So take a moment and follow through and establish your own sacred space. Today, I decided to create a sacred space in nature. Isn't nature its own sanctuary? I'm in my backyard near the garden. I'm hearing the sounds of nature. I'm getting my vitamin D, <laughs> some sunshine. Take the time to create a sacred space so that you can do the practice now from the prompt that I gave you today. And I'll give you this prompt again. How often are you filled with gratitude for your 3 a.m. friends? And what expressions of appreciation have you shown them lately? That'll put you right on track for this week. And then day two, day three, day four, Day five, day six, and day seven have questions that are geared toward the following. Day two is a question that has a question that's designed to center you. Day three has a question oriented toward calling you. How are you called by this? Day four, a question that challenges you. Day five, has a question in, that's uh, centered around providing you with clarity. Day six has a question oriented toward providing you with some comfort. And day seven has a question prompt oriented toward prompting you toward change. I'm asking you to engage in this 15 minute a day practice of just creating time to get still, get inspired, and reflect and engage in your journal practice and call back, repossess your breath for the journey. Okay, I hope all of you will participate. And of course, this is something you can do with others. And I'm glad we are pushing off together as did Ravi and I in creating this for us all. Well, beloveds, I wanna ask you if you would to take a moment to bless Unity of Sacramento. We are at that moment in our service where we are welcoming your generosity through your gifts, your tithes, your love offerings. 
your supporting contributions of this ministry. You know, we haven't missed a Sunday. <laughs> we have not missed a Sunday. We have found a way to continue being a voice and a force and an active presence through it all. And we won't miss. Help us to do that in greater ways. Give all that you can in support of this work. Knowing that you're working with a powerful law of circulation. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. One of my favorite texts. Have you ever had the experience of it coming back, pressed down, shaken together, and running, running over? It's possible. When you give in that spirit, it returns in that spirit in expected and unexpected ways, and even through our friendships, yes? So let me bless this gift. I believe there's a link in the chat room uh, for those who want to give electronically. I see thumbs up on that. Use that link to give. And let's take a moment to bless it now. God is the instant, constant, ever-flowing, overflowing, never ceasing, ever increasing, unfailing source of our infinite supply. We give generously and joyously and we receive freely and gratefully. And so it is. Amen. And amen. If you have not already done so, we invite you to download the Uni of Sacramento app. It allows you to become an, a recurring giver, a sustaining giver to Uni of Sacramento. You can set a tithing amount and it just happen automatically. I do this for our spiritual community. We also support other communities this way and it just keeps them in a position to be able to make plans around um, the, the goals and programs that they have for their ministry. Okay, uh, let's take a moment and see some faces and hear some voices and, and check in. Can we open it up, Rev E? You guys want to unmute yourselves and let's see who's here with us. And maybe let's shout out our 3 a.m. friends. Anybody got 3 a.m. friends you want to shout out? Come on in here. Let me see you. Who's with us this morning? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> is that Maria Fabionar? Yes, it is. <laughs> How are you? Fine. Yes, I have 3 a.m. friends. Usually it's a little earlier. I mean, usually it's at night, maybe not 2 <laughs> a.m. But they have been, oh, so very special. And uh, I really appreciate them. And I tell them that, that, um, that sometimes, you know, it's, it's just, it's just such a blessing to be able to know that of their presence and, and, um, uh, and just feeling their support, it, it just carries me. Mm -hmm. so, yes, I, I'm pretty verbal about saying thank you to them and, and yeah. uh, they are very dear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My joy, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. The, welcome, anyone else? Oh, I see you out there now. Come on and at least say good morning. Good God morning. I'll Let say me. good morning. Hey, who is good this? Good morning. This is Kaylin. Hi, Kaylin. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad Where to be you? a part this morning. I'm glad you are a part. Where are you joining <laughs> us from? Um, I live in Sacramento. I live in Natomas. Hey, Natomas. Yeah. You got a, you, you got a 3 a.m. friend you want to yeah. shout out? Uh, definitely. Um, first of all, I was born with one, my mom. She's always been my 3 a.m. friend. Um, and my best friends, Lauren, my Shanique, and Kristen. Lauren hey. was at baptism, too. So, Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, isn't that yeah. wonderful? Yeah, it is. It All is. Right. Thank you so much this mor for this morning. You got it. So glad to see you. All right. Welcome. Kaylin and the Thomas shouting out her three M friends. Who else wants to jump in here? I'll jump in, Rev. Hey, um, hey, 3 a.m. friend. Hey, 3 a.m. Um, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm so full. I'm so full on so many levels. Appreciative for your friendship and the countless ways that it has shown up. But also grateful. I'm also grateful for for this message. Mm -hmm. It is so relevant. It is so on time. For what we're moving during this season. And I'm so inspired right now to make more 3 a.m. friends, to cultivate more relationships and let people know that I'm rooting, as you say, that they're not alone. I can't think of a better message to start our breathing journey with. It's just divine order. It's divine order. By the way, friends, we didn't plan it that way. <laughs> the, the book is in alphabetical order. If you already have it, you know that the readings fall in alphabetical order. And so 3 a.m. friend, just, you know, it's a number. So it just turns out that, you know, it would be first, but you know how God is. God likes to wink at us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Thank you, brother. Rev. Are you finished? Sure. You, you, you got the floor. I'm good. Thank you, brother. Rev. Anyone else want to weigh in, chime in? Looks like well, we got it. It's, it's good morning. This is Yvette. I sure Hi, wish Yvette. I had spoken before Rev E. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I remember uh, it's, it was it's kind of a funny story. It was my kids were probably three and five and I got in a bad car accident and I didn't know what to do, who to call. And the man was yelling at me. And I was going through a divorce. So my heart was racing and I was in the middle of the street. It was uh, in front of Florence Center, the mall. Mm -hmm. And I was just bawling my eyes out. And this huge man was yelling at me. And I, I got on the phone and I was calling all my relatives and I got everyone's uh, voicemail. So I was leaving voicemails all over Sacramento. But then all of a sudden when a policeman came a policeman calmed me down and was like, everything's fine, everything's fine. And then um, all at the same time, all my relatives um, came and my husband who was even, we were going through a divorce, we were still friends, but he came and he calmed me down. And then like five of my relatives, my cousin, my mom, and just, it was hilarious because the police said, who, who are all these people coming up here? <laughs> And I Press told down, him, I said, I didn't, 
I said, I was in so much trouble. I didn't know what to do, but it was funny because they all got there at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. So I have a bunch of 3 a.m. Um, friends that I didn't really even know that I had, but I'm so, I'm so grateful for that. But I just, I want, just wanted to share that. <laughs> Beautiful, and you deserve it. You deserve it. Uh, anyone else? Thank you. Beth. Are we getting a little echo here? Mm. Uh, I think I'm getting some echo or some feedback, so I better not keep us out too much longer because I don't know how to control this. But I want to invite you all to join us on March 27th. We're going to have a breathing space half day retreat. Grab E and I are going to co facilitate it where we'll, we'll get a chance to cut in a little deeper. And so we're asking you to be a part of that. Everyone registering for the breathing space um retreat will receive a special edition copy okay of the book so if you already have the book that's wonderful that's that's for your 3am friend but you will not have this copy that we have here okay this is a special edition copy that will be shared in the retreat okay and it's our gift to those participating so you can't buy this per se um and it's our time to just drill down a little bit more into this work of establishing a practice. You know, our intention continues to be to provide people with the tools that they need to move through life, but also this particular pandemic that we're living through. One of the things that is not being discussed in, in the wake of get your vaccine and, and you know, stay safe and and, and, you know, um, wear your mask and hand sanitizer, which we're encouraging everybody to do all of the things that will address the physical aspect of this. But not much is being discussed about people's mental, emotional, spiritual well being. And we continue to receive the crisis calls and the, and the challenges that people are facing. And we just need more people equipped to be able to step through this, but also to be way showers, which is another thing we talk about in the book and, and we'll talk about in the retreat. How can I be a way shower during this very challenging time? Ravi and I certainly can't carry the weight of it all, right? So we, we, we want to multiply this consciousness. So join us. I think they put in the chat room the link to uh, for the retreat. So you're welcome to be a part. You're welcome to invite others. And we're so glad that to, to be able to provide this. Of course, it'll be Zoom, okay? So, but it'll be good because we're, we're, we've got some, some um, ways in which we have learned in this um, virtual world how to create environments that speak to the sacred. Um, I think I see a question. When will the special editions be sent out to those that have registered? They go out this week. <laughs> they go out this week. So they'll be coming, okay. Um, reason, it took a while for them to create these special editions because they're special. All right. Rev, we can't hear you anymore. We can't hear you, Rev. I'm clowning around, by the way. I was just clowning around. <laughs> There's a train going by. <laughs> okay. I was clowning around with you. I, you know, I try not to even compete. Uh, someone says, how do I get a special edition? You get the special edition when you register for breathing space, okay? It is a gift 
with breathing space. I think the, 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 uh, oh, how do you, someone says type it in the chat room. Do we have uh, the breathing space um, registration link there? Okay. All right. There it is. Okay. Very good. So if you if you are registered for that, we will be mailing you an autographed copy of the special edition uh, version of Breathing Space. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I, I'm just clowning with the train. Listen, on the other side of the Uni of Sacramento House today, we kick off the Dream Series. Some of you know about our Dream Series. It's that series of lessons that we offer every year to support people with discovering, developing, demonstrating, and deepening the dreams in their hearts. We still get to manifest dreams even now, okay? So that this series of lessons is underway. Also remember on March 21st, we will have a special live service, just like this, kind of a Zoom service, if you will, with Iyanla Van Zant. She will be sitting down with us. If you don't know Iyanla Van Zant, she is the a best-selling author and the star of Fix My Life on Oprah Winfrey Network. She's a friend of mine and um, we'll get a chance to sit down and do um, Ask Iyanla Sunday, where we'll get to ask Iyanla questions about our spiritual journey and manifesting our dreams. So she's gonna come in and, and support us with that. That information is on your app, that information is on your website. We would love for you all to uh, take part in that. You get a chance to send your questions in and I'll be able to get those questions to her. We'll have a live chat going to try and catch them there as well. All right, I'm loving you guys. I hope that you are um, going to join us in taking the rest of this journey with us, the 52 week breathing space journey and uh, dive deep. I might ask you, next week or Rev E might ask you next week uh, what opened up for you this past week. So um, we'll just continue to cut deeper and continue to find ways to provide tools, okay? Rev E, have I covered everything that we want to share with our beloveds before we say our prayer for protection? I believe you have. Okay. If I missed anything, guys, uh, check your guys and gals, beloveds, um, Check your Uni of Sacramento e-blast. We sent lots of information this week on a lot of wonderful opportunity. Uni of Sacramento News Live, which now has changed in our 1030 format. It precedes the service so that it's not a part of the service. You have to wait through. It starts in the countdown, okay? So we we done some innovation there. And then um, in your Uni of Sacramento website for information, you can always call the church, okay? We're loving you. We're praying with you. We're holding a high watch, by the way, for our beloved Carla Ruiz, our board member, whose father made his transition of COVID just a couple of days ago. So just lift her up and see her well. And if you know her personally, reach out to her at just be the beloved community that I know you are. Okay. We close this time of sharing together, affirming our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever you are, God is. And all is well. Peace and blessings, everybody. I love you. And remember to breathe, okay? Peace. Thanks for being with us today. Everybody. I, I see you, Vicky. I see you, Janelle. I see you, Patsy. I see you, Sandra. Have a great one. All right, Kaylin, Maria. Thanks, you Rev. too, Rev. All right. See you in a minute at 10 30. <laughs> All right. I'll be there. I promise. <laughs> I already bet. <laughs> All right. Peace and blessings.